Hi there, so today in this video what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we can conditionally call middleware actions. So you remember that we created this use API key message handler middleware and any request that comes into the system is going to go through that and what that checks for is to see if an API key has been set. So it's looking in the request header to see if it, there's a there's a value or a key called API key in, a, in this particular value. So if we run this, we can demonstrate how this works. When the the server first starts up, it it's running values by default, the values endpoint. So let's go hit this in Postman. So if I provide the API key and I call the API values, it works fine. But if I don't send that in, I get an invalid API key. So the question is, is what happens if we have certain controllers that we want to check this value for and others that we don't? So in other words, we want the middleware to be executed conditionally. There's a couple of different ways we could do that. One way is we can go into the middleware itself. So this is the code that does the checking for the key. And what we could do is actually put a check in here. And we, we can check the request that's coming in. We have that based on the context. And we can call this starts with segments method and we can give it the segment that we're looking for. So we only want this code to execute if the URI has API address labels in it. And so I will take all this checking code that's going on and I'll move it. into that if statement. And then we'll run this again. So we do have to make a little modification of the code for this to work. Um, the way it is right now, it just doesn't come back with anything, which is not what we want. So let's stop this. And what we really need is we need this else statement still to work. So we'll put that in right there. Run this again. Works. Remember that this next invoke causes it to go to the next middleware step. And if you don't put that in there, it just kind of dies right there. So that's why we needed to put that in there. So basically it comes in and it checks and it says, well, does it have API address labels? If it does, we'll check the API key. If it doesn't, just go on to the next thing. So what happens if I say address labels here and pass the API key? So that works. If I turn the API key off and don't send it, I should get an invalid API key, which I do. With values, the other controller, it doesn't matter whether the API key is on or off, it always calls that method. So that's the desired behavior that we wanted. However, that's not necessarily the best way to do this because we've buried the logic of this now in code. And if you have a bunch of different controllers, you're having to manage this all the time in different places in the code. So let's look at a different way we could do this instead of doing it like this. So we'll put this code back the way it was. So we're taking out all of that code I just added and we're gonna look at our actual startup file. So remember this really defines the pipeline um, with the middleware in it. And here's the middleware that we've registered and configured that is the middleware in question. So Really what we'd like to do is check this right here instead of having to check it inside that code. Okay, so let's look at how we might do that. 
There are two things to be aware of. Hang on one second. To put conditions in your middleware in, in this start uh, startup.cs file. One is to use something called use when, and one is to use something called map when. So map when, that's M-A-P when, all one word, that will actually cause it to fork to a different thing. So we could do something like this, app.map when, and we would write some code here. And then what would happen is all subsequent requests would go down this path. So it wouldn't come back and execute anything below. And that's not really what we want. We want to make it more conditional like an if statement. And so we're going to use something called use when. And we have a condition here that we're going to set up. You'll notice the logic here is similar. Starts with segments, and we're going to do the same thing we did on the other one, which is slash API slash address labels. We're going to say app builder. We're going to put in the code that we want to check like this. Let's see if I can move this out just a little bit so you can see it. So we're going to conditionally use this middleware when this particular condition is met and then we, we can't say app here. If you say app right here it's going to continue to execute every time, which we don't want. It needs to be in the context of this code that we're building here. Okay. Just as a reminder, this particular code pattern is known as a predicate. And essentially, this is the logic. It basically says, if this is true, then go ahead and execute what's in here. And remember that startup.cs is run at startup. It's not run on every request. So that's, an, that's another difference. It, this, it, this essentially configures the logic for us. So let's run this now. All right, so here's our code running. So let's try the different scenarios again. So values without with the API key without the API key, works either ways, either way. API address labels work does not work without the API key. I have to actually have the API key in there and then it works. So this is an example of how you've added a conditional predicate to um, use the API key check that we built earlier. So this has got a lot of power. Um, remember the other one is map win that you can look at if you need to actually take go down a totally different path. Um, so in uh, this, this video I did because of a question that I got on how to do this. So I encourage you to continue to ask questions. Also, please like the videos if you do like them and subscribe to the channels. There's three channels out there right now. Um, sorry, three playlists in my channel. Um, so there's one on SQL Server, just kind of some beginning basics if you're interested in that. And there's also one on traditional ASP.NET Web API. And this video series that we're working on right now is ASP.NET Core 2.0. So we will continue with this. We're gonna look at logging and we're gonna look at using some of the built-in middleware that comes with ASP.NET Core. So I hope this was useful to you. Please uh, thank you for watching and keep watching.